Ever since Starship Flights 7 and 8 wrapped up, most of the spotlight has been on Block 2 hardware issues, things like harmonic oscillations and propellant leaks. But what if there's another factor quietly playing a big role in these problems, one that's flying under the radar? We're talking about hot staging. Now, hot staging has proven its effectiveness in earlier test flights. But with the introduction of Starship version 2, the cracks are starting to show. So what's really going wrong here? And more importantly, how can it be fixed? We're breaking it all down in today's episode of TechMap. Hot staging is a technique where the upper stage engines are ignited before the lower stage has fully detached. SpaceX adopted this approach as a key upgrade following Starship's first integrated flight test in 2023, which ended in failure less than three minutes after launch. One major issue was the stage separation system. It didn't work as planned. Back then, separation relied on angular momentum conservation. This involved the Super Heavy booster gimballing its engines to impart a rotation to the rocket before separation, effectively flicking Starship away from the booster. The key problem with the original design was the ignition sequence of the ship engines during stage separation. But this system had a critical flaw. When the ship engines ignited during the separation process, the heat and pressure didn't have anywhere to go. That buildup could damage the engines or even the booster itself. As a result, SpaceX rethought the process and landed on hot staging, a method long used by Russian rockets. It keeps thrust continuous and allows for a much smoother separation. To make it work, SpaceX created a specialized hot staging ring between the booster and spacecraft. This ring has multiple vents that allow the built-up heat and pressure to escape safely, which solves the issue that plagued the first flight. They also added new vents and thick heat shields to protect the booster from exhaust hitting it during ignition. The second Starship test flight proved the system's effectiveness. The vehicle handled separation without a hitch. It was a major milestone in improving the rocket for future missions. But just because hot staging worked well in that flight doesn't mean it's perfect. Later flights, like Flight 7 and 8, highlighted some real concerns, especially as SpaceX began testing the upgraded Starship version 2. Here's where things get tricky. When the upper stage engines ignite, they can create shock waves and back pressure. That's dangerous for the vacuum-optimized Raptor engine bells. These bells are built for space, with thin walls and wide openings to boost efficiency. At sea level, or in the chaotic moment of hot staging, they're vulnerable to stress, heat, and even exhaust blowback. Cracks or deformations here could seriously compromise the mission or cause a failure during ascent. Another big challenge? Heat. The downward-facing plumes from the Starship engines generate extreme thermal stress, even with the hot stage ring in place. Unlike static fires on the ground where exhaust can freely dissipate, in-flight hot staging traps that heat in a confined space. That can lead to dangerously high temperatures, stressing the booster's bulkhead, plumbing, or propellant lines. If those parts weaken, it could explain failures like leaks or even onboard fires, especially with cryogenic propellants like methane and oxygen already straining the system. Interestingly, Starship version 1 didn't have these problems, likely because it had a reinforced engine bay for better protection. But version 2 made design changes to cut down weight. That may have involved removing some of that protection leaving engines more exposed. The result? The rocket might not be fully equipped to handle all the stresses of hot staging, vibrations from engine ignition, thermal gradients from exhaust gases, and mechanical loads from the booster below. Vital systems like engine mounts or cryo-stressed fuel lines could crack or even fail. There's also the issue of testing. Ground static fires don't mimic real flight conditions. They don't include hot staging. So, some of the biggest stresses go untested until the vehicle is in the air. 
Finally, the hot staging ring itself needs refinement. Its short length means some of that heat and pressure still hits the booster's components, like the grid fins. That could affect booster control and recovery. The vents are also fairly small, which limits how effectively they can relieve pressure. Plus, the ring is still pretty heavy, so SpaceX has to jettison it mid-flight to keep things maneuverable. But since the ultimate goal is full reusability, dropping parts mid-air isn't ideal. To address these issues, a redesigned hot staging system has been proposed. The new design would resemble the one used on the Soviet N-1 rocket, but with significant improvements. The ring would be longer, providing better protection for critical components, such as the grid fins. This adjustment, combined with moving the grid fins lower on the booster, would help to minimize the impact of the ship engine exhaust on the booster during separation and descent. The vents would also be enlarged to maximize heat and pressure dissipation. This improvement would ensure a smoother separation and reduce unnecessary stress at both stages. Additionally, the new design appears to be significantly simpler, making it easier to manufacture, integrate, and refurbish between flights. A key advantage of this updated hot staging system is its reduced weight. The lighter design means SpaceX may no longer need to remove the ring after separation. Instead, it could return to Earth with the booster, making full reusability more realistic. With this new design, the Starship's separation process would be more efficient, ensuring both the booster and ship are in optimal condition for their respective missions. It's a seemingly small change, but one that would have a significant impact, a hallmark of SpaceX's continued innovation. If this new hot staging system is implemented in version 3, we could see it introduced as early as late 2025. Last year, Elon Musk discussed version 3 during a presentation at Starbase, highlighting SpaceX's future plans for Starship in both Texas and Florida. NASA officials recently mentioned that version 3 will play a key role in the upcoming refueling infrastructure which is expected to be operational by the end of this year. This suggests that version 3 will need to be ready by then, or even sooner, to support these missions. However, it's possible that the upgraded hot staging system could arrive sooner. In Musk's presentation, Starship version 2 was also described with a hot staging ring similar to version 3's. Currently, the B-15 and B-16 boosters appear to be in the version 1 configuration. This means that the B-17, which is currently under construction, could be the first to use the new system. Given SpaceX's rapid production rate, this prototype could be completed in April. If so, the arrival of the new hot staging system could be imminent. Given the concerns surrounding hot staging, some analysts have proposed a number of potential solutions. The first solution is to phase out hot staging. By eliminating the need to fire the main Raptor engines during separation, SpaceX could avoid backfire shock, pressure waves, and thermal stress on the vacuum bells and bulkhead. This approach would preserve the integrity of the propulsion system and eliminate the heavy hot stage ring, thereby reducing structural mass. The second solution is to install thrusters on each of Starship's flaps. Placing thrusters on all four flaps, two forward and two aft, could serve two purposes, to assist with ascent and to control separation. During boost, all four thrusters would operate, drawing fuel from the booster's tanks through a cross-feed system, effectively increasing the booster's thrust. At separation altitude, which may be lower than hot staging, the forward thrusters can shut down, allowing the booster to separate and return sooner, while the aft thrusters keep the Starship aloft. These thrusters don't need to be as powerful as the Raptor. Smaller, simpler engines designed for short bursts could do the job, saving weight and complexity compared to a hot stage setup. Many also believe that SpaceX could solve the issues with hot staging, 
by removing the three sea-level Raptor engines from Starship, which are primarily used for landing, and replacing them with additional gimbaled vacuum Raptors, bringing the total to seven. This could optimize the vehicle for spaceflight. The flap thrusters would handle ascent and separation, while the vacuum Raptor engines would take over after separation. This change could increase payload capacity by favoring vacuum-optimized engines and freeing up space in the engine bay. In terms of reliability, these solutions could address fuel line and engine issues associated with hot staging. Without the intense forces created by firing Raptor engines in a confined space, the vacuum bells and fuel lines would be less stressed, potentially reducing the risk of cracking or failure. However, implementing these solutions is not without challenges especially when it comes to cross-fueling. SpaceX needs a robust, quick-disconnect QD mechanism that works flawlessly during stage separation. While SpaceX has explored cross-fueling ideas before, for example with the original Falcon Heavy designs, they have never actually implemented them. This means they will need to rely on their engineering expertise while conducting rigorous testing to prevent leaks or blockages. For now, SpaceX remains committed to improving the hot staging, rather than replacing it. In a recent update, Elon Musk and his team revealed a new hot staging design for Starship version 2 and version 3, as I mentioned. SpaceX is also adjusting the position of the booster's grid fins. By lowering them, they will be less affected by the heat and pressure of the hot staging extending their lifespan and improving the reliability of booster recovery. In conclusion, hot staging has proven to be an effective separation solution, but it also presents new challenges. While SpaceX is actively working to refine the system, alternative approaches, such as adding thrusters, could provide long-term benefits. SpaceX's Starship is a revolutionary spacecraft and launch system currently in development. As the world's largest and most powerful rocket, Starship is designed to be fully reusable. This two-stage vehicle aims to dramatically reduce launch costs and enable long-duration interplanetary flights. With a planned payload capacity of up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit, Starship is intended for a variety of missions, including crewed flights to the Moon and Mars, satellite deployment, and even point-to-point -point transportation on Earth. As of April 2025, SpaceX has conducted eight test flights of Starship, with several successful launches, as the company continues to refine and improve this groundbreaking spacecraft. In 2025, SpaceX's primary goal for Starship is to push it towards operational readiness, aiming for rapid reuse and potentially deploying real satellites into orbit, with a target of 25 launches. Starship will be used to test the deployment of Starlink satellites, potentially deploying real satellites into orbit.